well, good morning. Come on, Bridge Church, Central Coast, give yourselves a hand. This is my grandson, David, and uh, he wanted to help me out this morning in welcoming you, and I want to read a verse of Scripture and give you a little direction. In Psalms 146, it says this, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will give praise to the Lord. I will sing praises to God while I have my being. Now, let me just give you a little clue here. The Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. What that means is that when we praise him, God shows up. And the Bible says he's, another version says he's enthroned on the praises of Israel. And so God's responsibility is to show up. Our responsibility is to create an atmosphere where he can show up. Okay? And so um, you, you let me just, uh, you know, how do we praise the Lord? We don't praise the Lord with our hands in our pockets and we're looking around or we're looking at our phone or, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but anyhow. The Bible says we praise Him by lifting our hands, by clapping, by shouting, by singing, by giving thanks. The Bible says we enter His gates with the Psalms 100 with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Now, I just don't think it's worth coming to church if you don't encounter God. What's the point? I mean, you came here because you said, man, I need some Jesus in my life. Right? Look at, come on, my... Grandson's giving the thumbs up here. I need some Jesus in my life. I need to get in contact with God. So if you'll do your part, God will do his part. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to praise God. I mean, like, out loud. I mean, like, embarrass yourself. Come on. All right? So, Father, we're going to pray, David. What do you think? Are you cool? All right. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege of praising you which we will be doing for all eternity. There's just not enough of eternity to give enough praise to, for who you are. We thank you. You're the creator of all things. You're the king of all kings. You're the Lord of all lords. You're the prince of peace. You're the mighty God. You're the wonderful counselor. You are our soon coming king, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Can you say amen, David? Amen. <laughs> all right. God bless you.
What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name
beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus We wanted to take some time this morning to actually take communion together. If you have not gotten your communion elements, they're here on either side of the stage and in the back. If you would get those so you can participate together. And um, I really feel that God wants to do something very specific through communion this morning. You know, of all the things that it tells us to do as a church together, One of the main ones is that we're to break bread together and to do this in remembrance of him. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, the Bible says that he was with his disciples and he broke some bread and he handed them each a piece of bread and he said, take and eat, for this is my body that was broken for you. And then it says he took a cup of wine and he said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant through which you are forgiven. Come on, that's some good news, folks. Through the blood of Jesus. And then Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. That means he was saying there's some things you need to remember. Uh, And and, and I'm I'm asking, he said, as often as you do it. So in other words, I think we forget. I think we forget what Jesus has done for us. I think that we don't really realize that he really died for us. He really paid the price for our sins, that he is really a good God. And the Bible tells us this. It says that Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame for the joy that was set before him. In other words, when he was on the cross, what gave him the ability to endure the cross was he saw something through the cross that gave him a joy that enabled him to go through the cross. You know what he saw? He saw you. He saw you right here this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. He saw you standing there. And he looked through the cross and he saw you and he said, Father, I can do this. I can do this. And uh, I believe the message today, now there's many things we're to remember But today I felt like the Lord said, I want them to remember how much I love them. How much I love them. In, uh, In John chapter 15, it says, greater love is no one. Jesus said this, greater love is no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. I want to read a verse of scripture. It's found in Romans chapter 5. And it says this, starting with verse 6, it says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Do we have any ungodly people here in the room? Three people. Okay, the rest of you need to get saved. Christ died for the ungodly, it says. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, We shall be saved from wrath through him. And then it says this. It says, but for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, but yet perhaps for a good man someone even would dare to die. Listen to this. But God. Everybody say, but God. But God God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I want you to notice he didn't die for you when you got it all together. He didn't die for you when you lived a perfect life. He didn't die for you when you were holier than the person standing next to you. But he died for you while you were still a sinner. Amen. And his death is still good. And his blood is still good. And it's given you one major message, and that is, I love you. I love you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in it would not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Now, I just know, I just been praying about this, what I was going to do this morning, but I believe that there are people here that you really have a question mark when it, does God really love me? And I believe today God wants to demonstrate his love through you. And he already did it. He did it on the cross. But I believe that he wants you to encounter his love in communion today. You're going to remember, and this is going to go on from today, you're going to have encounters with the love of God. And just one more thing. I, I was driving. I was in Missouri years ago, and I had a van. I was driving back from a trip we had gone on, and I'm going down the road, and all of a sudden, Jesus' face. Now, I know this sounds weird, but Jesus' face appears in front of me uh, on the other side of the, of the windshield. And he looked at me, and he said, I love you more passionately than any human being will ever love you. And I almost went off the road lost control of the car because I felt the love of God. And God wants you to not only know he loves you, he wants you to feel his love and experience it. And so as we do this this morning, let's prepare our elements here, and we're going to partake of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. And so, Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you so loved us. It's your body was broken so we might be made whole. Hallelujah. You gave your body. Your body became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in you. And so, Lord, we want to do this and remember and experience your love in this time. In Jesus' name, let's eat together. And, Lord, we thank you for the blood that you shed which your word says speaks better than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel called for condemnation. Your blood calls for justification. Your blood says we have been made righteous. And we thank you, Lord, we cannot cleanse ourselves from sin, but your blood can do it. It's still doing it. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink together. Now, I want you to say this. After me, say, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. In Jesus' name, amen.
gift was fully purchased when the lamb was crucified so now freely i can ask him for his blood has washed me clean let the dove of heaven rest upon the christ in me let the dove of heaven rest upon the
touch of the Spirit, just lift up His name. Jesus, we lift our lives up to You. We surrender our hearts before You. You freely gave everything so that we can receive Your Holy Spirit. We receive from You right now. ask for your presence more. We ask for you more. Holy Spirit, we ask for you more. We need you more. We don't need more of ourselves. We need more of you. May we decrease so that you can increase, Holy Spirit. Continue to open our ears to hear from you. Open our spirit to receive what you want to speak to us. Speak your life over us, Father. Thank you, Lord. We celebrate you, Jesus, and what you've done for us. We honor you. Thank you, Father. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for entering in to worship with us for our King Jesus. Why don't you go ahead and greet each other? Good morning, Bridge. How are you guys? How are you guys doing? Could you get a round of applause for the worship team? That was beautiful. They just ushered in the Holy Spirit so well. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Pastor Fred, for being obedient. We love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, how, you guys, how are you guys doing today? How are you guys doing? Bless Sunday. Let's go. Um, for, you, uh, for you guys that don't know me, my name is Matt Gill, and I've had the honor to uh, bring you guys the, the tithe and offering message today. Um, so I had, a, um, I had a little testimony that I was going to share, but as I was praying on it, the Lord... Uh, kept talking to me about character. He kept speaking to me, kept saying the word character, character. So I, I, I look in the word. And the scripture that he gave me was Luke 6, 43 through, 43 through 45. Um, and it says, a good tree can produce bad fruit, cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes and grapes are not picked from brumble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I was, I was trying to figure out what it meant, you know, what, what kind of character. And, you know, we're told that we give from our first fruit. So, so I ask you, this is the Lord speaking to me as well, but to you guys. What fruit are you bearing? What are you giving the Lord? And when we talk about character, what are we speaking? Are we gossiping? Are we cussing? Are, what are we acting like? Not in here, because we could all put that mask on in here, but out there in the world. What are we giving? And so with that, the Lord told me to, to give in faith. That's what we need to give in. It's our heart. Give from your heart. Give in faith. Um, there was something I want to share. I, I, um, as I was research, looking up what to share with you guys, and it was a, a, from another pastor, so I won't take credit for it. <laughs> it's uh, Pastor Rick Warren. Um, what he says, there's two ways to give. You can give by reason or you can give by revelation. To give by reason is to figure out uh, a reasonably um, what you think you can give and it doesn't require faith. That's giving by reason. But when you give by revelation, come on somebody. When you give by revelation, you let God reveal to you what he wants you to give in faith. It means you pray. It means you ask God, how much do you want me to trust you with, Father? How do you want me to run my business, Father God? I give you my family. I give you my marriage. I give you everything, Lord. Lay it all down at the foot of the cross. That's what he wants you to give. And it doesn't matter how much it is. He just wants you to give in faith. He wants you to give with the whole, wholeheartedly. 
So with that being said, um, there is a part, there's another scripture I did want to share. Um, I may have lost it, but it was, uh, <laughs> sorry, it was Malachi 3, uh, verse 10. Bring all the tithes into, his store, into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord, the Lord in heaven, I will open up the windows of heaven for you and I will pour out blessings so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. And then he says, try it. So I say that. Try it, friends. Try it, brothers and sisters. Give in faith. Give wholeheartedly. Give him your marriage if you're struggling. Give him your business if your business is struggling. I promise you. I've shared one, te one testimony before if you guys are here to, here to hear, but it the Lord has blessed me greatly. At this time, for the past six years, I've made the least amount. I'm getting personal. I'm being transparent. But I, the abundance of the Lord, since I've laid everything down in front of him, I am so blessed. I have, I'm blessed with the family, me and my wife, my, my daughter, and my about to, we're about to have another daughter in Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we're so blessed. So, friends and family, um, just give in faith. And if you're going to give grudgingly, just don't give it all. That, that's, what, that's what I say. But um, there are four ways to give. You guys can see you give in person by mail, online, or the mobile app. Um, so with that being said, that's the tithe amount. I'm going to pray for our tithe. I want to pray for you guys. So Father God, Lord, I just pray, I pray for all my brothers and sisters in here. Father God, I bless them, Father God. I bless their families. I bless their households. I bless their finances, Father God. I bless the fruit that they're going to sow into your kingdom, Father God, to extend the tent pegs of your kingdom, Father God. So we praise you, Lord, and we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And um, with that being said, those are the announcements, and we'll bring up Pastor Carmelo. <laughs> Come on, so if you guys can, please extend your hands. We're going to pray for our pastor. Father God, we come before you today, Lord, and we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the breath in our lungs. Thank you for waking us up and bringing us here to gather today, Father God, in your house, Father God. And right now, I want to pray for this man of God, Father. I want to thank you for the, for the pastor. He is the friend, the father that he is, Father, to, to his children, the husband that is to his wife, Father God. So anoint him, Lord. Come over him. Put your hand on him, Father God, and speak through him, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good job, bro. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. It's a good brother right there. It's a good brother. And again, I'm going to be talking about today is about teaching. And a lot of us, we need to be, even today as us coming here to church, how many of us have a teachable heart today? A teachable heart to receive God's word. Not through me, through the Holy Spirit that has given me the passage and the message to deliver. Because I always say, Lord, not my word. There's no power in my word. There's no power in Pastor Carmelo's word. But there's only power in the name of Jesus. There's only power in the word of God. And that's why I say here, every time I go up here and preach the gospel, this is what I say. Get in your guys' what? Word. So the what? could get in you. If you don't get in your word, then the word is not going to get in you. This word of God is active. It's alive. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces through a joint and marrow. Come on, somebody. And it divides between soul and spirit. Soul and spirit. The word of God is alive. Don't just read this as a book. But I'm saying, if you don't know what is in the word of God, the devil will tell you all day long, your situation is hopeless, Man, whatever the case is, but that's why I say get in your guys' word so the word could get you out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. Amen? Amen? Come on, somebody. So with that being said, welcome to the British Central Coast. Love you guys. My name is Carmelo Hernandez. I have a great honor and privilege of being a youth pastor here at the bridge. And the Lord is having me deliver the message today out of John chapter 8, 1 through 11. All righty? Let's jump right into it. But Jesus... Went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple. And all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? They said this testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Verse 9, verse 7. 
So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Verse 10. When Jesus raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Verse 11, she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Let's pray. Come on, somebody. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father, for your word, Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, may you soften people's hearts to receive your word. Even right now, Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence, Father. God. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we don't want to control this room, Lord. Even right now, I want to release your presence, Father. We bind up anything that is not of you, Father. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray may you open up ears so they can receive what you are saying to them, Father. God. May you open, soften their hearts to receive the word, Father, that you want to speak through every single one of us. Speak through me today so we can produce fruit fruit that remains in Jesus name and everybody said amen amen Amen. look to your guys as a neighbor and tell them the title of my message that the Lord is having me deliver Jesus stands for you come on somebody to your second choice turn to your second choice and tell them the same thing tell them the same thing Jesus stands for you Come on, somebody. So again, let's break this down. Let's break down the word of God. Like, man, when I just, these aren't just words on a page. This isn't just acts of a religious thing that we come over here and and we it's a checkbox or whatever the case. Even for you guys, I knew I see a lot of new faces over here. Love you guys. But I'm going to tell every single one of you guys, going to church does nothing. Let's get that out of the way right now. Going to church does nothing. Now becoming the church, that changes people's lives. When they see you, do they want what you have? Do they know you had an encounter with Jesus? Jesus said that they'll recognize you by your fruit. What is your fruit? It's love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Amen? Come on, someone. So let's break this down. Uh, Verse 1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. But Jesus... This is very significant. First service did not get this. This is very significant. But Jesus, for you guys that have been along with the bridge for many years, out of this passage right here, those very two words, in John chapter 8, I was studying my word of God. It was me and Pastor Justin. And when we, and, uh, when we used to run the youth out of my house, out of my garage, out of my garage doing sermon prep, exactly what we're doing right now. And we read these two words. But Jesus, but Jesus, and everything inside of me lit up. For you guys don't know, like that is like our, our theme of this church, of, not of our life. We have it all over our cars and sweatshirts, our hats. But Jesus, what does that mean to you that you guys are new, are new here? What do you mean, but Jesus? This is what it's about. Some of you guys in here right now, of all the hell that you guys been through, you shouldn't have made it. But Jesus. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You're ma- you guys still shouldn't be married right now, but Jesus. You guys should be in a divorce right now, but Jesus. You should still be in that addiction that you were suffering for many years, but Jesus. You shouldn't have made it out of that sickness, but Jesus. That's where it's about, but Jesus. That is the story of our life. That is an open conversation. What do you mean, but Jesus? Definitely, I shouldn't be a pastor, but Jesus. Come on, somebody. I deserve hell, but Jesus. But if you apply the blood of Jesus to your life, it's over. Apply that one drop of blood to your life, you'll never be the same. But Jesus, but Jesus, where in your life right now do you, have you had that revelation? It's all about revelation. You got to have that revelation that, oh my goodness, I know what I deserve. I was a hurting, broken, gang member, alcoholic. But Jesus, but I had an encounter with Jesus. Have you had an encounter with Jesus? That's what it's about. Come on, somebody. 
But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him early in the morning. Early in the morning. Oh, come on. I'm so thankful for one early Sunday morning where God, one early Sunday morning, raised his son Jesus from the dead through the Holy Spirit. And because of that, freely, like because of that, now we could live in him. He died for us so we could live for him. That's all he's asking us for to do. My brothers and sisters in Christ, he died for you, but God raised him to dead. So now all we got to do is live for him. Early in the morning, Jesus came into the temple. He came again into the temple. What does that mean? He came again. That means he has a routine. Jesus had a routine. He came again to the temple. What is your routine, my brothers and my sisters? Are you a snoozer when, the, when your alarm goes off? Are you a snoozer? Huh? Or do you wake up before the alarm like, come on, somebody. What do you want to do? I'm going to go storm the gates of hell. What are you going to do? Thank you, Lord, for the goodness and your faithfulness. of Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you that I've had a revelation of who you are and what you've done in my life. Because of that, Holy Spirit, what is my assignment today? Lord, thank you for the gift of life, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for teaching me how to be a father, to be a provider. Lord. All because of you, Jesus. I could do nothing apart from you, Jesus. But I can do all things through you who give me strength. I can't preach. I can't teach. But I can do all things through him who give me strength. A routine. He went again into the temple. What is your routine, my brothers and my sisters? What do you do? Do you pick up your phone? Woo, come on, somebody. I love you guys. What's the first thing you guys do? Oh, what's on social media? Come on. So how many likes did I get? How many hearts did I get? Just know this, my brothers and my sisters. Don't know that you're liked. Know that you're loved. Know that you're loved. I feel that heavily right now. Jesus loves you. It's a simple gospel and it's a simple truth. And it's the kindness and goodness. You're going to hear in this passage that it's the kindness and the goodness of God that leads us all to repentance. Meaning the way that we've been living. I say this all the time. When I was, I was so hurting and broken and lost. So because I was so hurting, broken and lost, that what did I do? Hurting people hurt people. Right? You guys know this. And you know what we do? We could hurt ourselves by sin and we could get numb to the sin or the compromise in our lives. But just know it's the kindness and goodness that leaves God's, leads people to repentance. Turn around. It's not a 360. 360, you're going to go back and you're going to end up in the same spot. It's a 180. Turn around. Change the way you think. Renew your mind. Amen. He came again into the temple. He's talking about Jesus. And all, how many people? All the people gathered around him. This is in your Bible. This is a story. Jesus went early in the morning, again into the temple, and all the people gathered around him. All the people gathered around him. Let me ask you this question. Survey your life. Who gathers around you? Who gathers around you? Are they drawn to your light? Do they know you've had an encounter with Jesus? Not just proclamation, but is it demonstration that these signs will follow those who believe? I'm what you call a believer. All the people gathered around him. Do you know what it says in the book of Isaiah regarding our Lord and our Savior? That he wasn't flashy? He wasn't all bougie. He wasn't all this, right? All this, I got to look a certain way. Do you want to see what it says in the word of God in Isaiah 53 and verse 2 on describing our Lord and our Messiah? Get this. Isaiah 53 and verse 2 says this. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire in him. Describing the Messiah. Give me some more for you guys. 1 Samuel 16, 6 and 7. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height. 
Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> For I have rejected him. The Lord, come on somebody, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. This is scripture. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's your character. It's the character that's what I'm talking about. When people see you, do they want what you have? Are you just religious? Do you have a form of godliness and you're lacking the power thereof? Like it says in the book of Timothy, you know what that is? That's carnality. Carnal Christians. Man, do you realize the same Holy Spirit that raised our Lord and Sir, uh, Savior from the grave lives in us? Lives in us. But that's only if you know who you are by the authority and the power through the Holy Spirit. So that's why if I walk into a dark place, if I go into a place, I'm taking authority over that whole place. I'm taking authority over everything. Every demon must bow. Not in my name. Not in Pastor Carmelo's name. There's no power in my name. Only in the name of Jesus, in the authority that I've given. So when I walk into a gym, I walk into a store, I walk into your guys' house, I'm taking authority over that whole house. Jesus name. Jesus name. Because Jesus said he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail. I just happen to be, I just don't go to church. I am the church. And Jesus said he will build it and the gates of hell, plural, will not prevail. Come on, somebody. So we could dress it all up, put our little shiny shoes on, put our little bridge. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm, I love you guys. Put our little stickers in the back of our cars. Oh, uh, the little uh, fishy with the thing on it, right? All that little stuff. I love Jesus and all this stuff. But then you get out, come on somebody, and you give them the number one sign because they cut you off in the, in the road. <laughs> or you, you do something to them. Come on somebody, right? I'm telling you, you're not going to see Pastor Carmelo punching nobody. You're not going to see him cussing nobody out. You're not going to see him doing those things. Why? Because I have that godly character. We got to recognize that we wrestle not and we fight not against flesh and blood. It's spiritual. But if, if you don't know who you are, you're going to take it personal. Why are you walking around so offended? It's not them. I love you guys. But guess who it is? It's you. It's you. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, the very first thing that we got to do is deny yourself. But you don't know what they did to me, pastor. I'm not justifying what they did was right. Forgive them, for they know not what they do, is what our Lord and our Savior said from the cross. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's not them. It's you. I still, he still, by, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that's why he said, they just haven't had revelation yet. And because of that, Alex and Abby, because of that, Carmelo, because of that, I'm sending my son to the, to the cross for them. And I'm going to forgive them. But, I want, but once they get revelation, once they get the revelation of the blood of Jesus, I'm going to use them to preach the gospel and set my captives free. Because it's the kindness and goodness that leads us to repentance. It's godly character. Again, it's not about how you dress it up. We could do all these works. We could do all this stuff. Do you realize what it says also in scripture that gifting and callings are irrevocable? That's God's gift to you. So whatever gift that you guys walk in, that you guys know that you guys don't have to practice with, that's God's gift to you on how much that he loves you. But it's your character. It's the fruits of the spirit that recognize and show Jesus on how, true, on how much you truly love him. On your life lived. It's all about character. And you know what? Character building, it sucks. <laughs> it does. For, forgive me, but it does. I remember when I first gave my life to Jesus, I'm telling you, I was a gang member, all, all that stuff you guys don't hear my testimony. True story, born here, raised here in Santa Maria. 
And I literally, I didn't go to church. I never knew nothing about church. I gave my life to Jesus. I received salvation. I literally thought that I'd be walking on water. I thought like, oh my God. But as soon as I gave my life to Jesus, it feels like all hell came against me. Can you guys, any of you guys relate to that? Like you thought everything was going to be all good and all rosy and no more trials and no more tribulations. So I would go and i knock at my pastor's door. Hey, what do you mean? Look at all this stuff that's going on. Carmelo, Carmelo, Carmelo. It's called character building. What is character? Oh, Carmelo, I'm going to write a book about, he told me that. Those are his words. I stole from him. Ed Lixie, I'm telling you. Um, so that happened, right? And it's about character building. So he said this, Carmelo, the way you grew up and the, the way that you were taught, you can't live like that. Those are the ways of the world. You no longer fight in flesh. I'm like, what do you mean you don't fight in flesh? That guy's disrespectful. I got to punch him in his face, right? No, Carmelo, you can't. I ought to, but Jesus, but Jesus. How many of you got like so many people like you just want to throat punch, right? But Jesus, <laughs> but Jesus, right? And I could probably ask grace and forgiveness for it, but I ought to do it, but Jesus, because I had a revelation of him, man, you ought to thank Lord. You, like, you ought to thank the Lord right now. If it wasn't for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Gotta laugh. It's the joy of the Lord that's our strength, huh? Come on, somebody. I literally know I shouldn't be a pastor, but Jesus. But guess what? None of you guys chose me. He chose me. I'm not able, but I'm willing. I, I say yes by faith. Because if we could do it in our own strength and our own wisdom, and that's what happens a lot of times. So many people miss the things in their life because they want to get all their ducks in a row. How's this going to happen? How am I going to make this happen? But that's only because you're doing it on your own strength so you could get all the glory. But God wants all the glory. And that's why he uses such people like me and all of us. Once we have that revelation that we could do nothing apart from him, but we could do all things through him who give us strength. Amen? Come on, somebody. Still in verse 2. And you're telling me the word of God is boring. It's not. Oh, my. I could keep on going it's in that one verse. Come on, somebody. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. He sat down, and he taught them. I always ask people this. When I'm meeting with people or even I'm at a barbecue just like I was yesterday or at a family event or whatever the case, and I'm with fellow believers, here's what I go up and I ask people, what's the Lord teaching you right now? If you know this, what's the Lord teaching you right now? What is he teaching you right now? But you know what happens? Oh, Pastor Carmelo's preaching. Oh, Pastor, oh, it's so amazing. It's so awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. But I go up to that brother after that's so amazing. But what did the Lord teach you? We want these signs and we want these wonders. No, he needs to teach you character. He needs you to know when you get those finances, when the Lord blesses you with those finances, Lord, we need to be like, Lord, teach me how to, be, how to be, honor the Lord with my finances. Lord, teach me how to be a husband. Lord, teach me how to be a father. Lord, teach me how to be a son. Lord, definitely teach me how to be a pastor. You know who our greatest teacher is? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher. But we want to walk in all these signs. Lord, give me a word of knowledge. Let me walk by faith. Let me... Oh, they're chasing the gifts. It's a character. It's the fruit of your life. Not the fruits of the... It's the fruit of your life. The gifts are irrevocable. How's your character? How's your character? Just like Jesus, you know that like, man, you want to study, type up Jesus' teaching. You know how many teaching moments there are? That Jesus wants to just teach us. Do you know the greatest teaching message ever was a sermon on the mount? Where Jesus sat down just like he did right here in this passage, he sat down and taught thousands of people known as the Sermon on the Mount from five, Matthew 5 through 7. Matthew 5, 1 and 2 says this. 
Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, sat down, and began to teach them. And his disciples came to him. Those are the Beatitudes. What are the Beatitudes? The Beatitudes are, is your character. He said, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for you will see God. You will see God. Again, when I talk to all the people, I, I say this all the time. What is the Lord teaching you? What is he speaking to you? And I don't just say that to say that. Pastor Carmelo, you guys get to know me. I don't just say things to say things. I'm doing it for a reason. Because I know, not if, when the devil comes and attacks me, and he comes at me, and he comes after me and my family, and he comes after me, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, like, who's in their word? Who's abiding with the Father? Who's getting revelation? And if they're saying, like, man, he, you're giving me scripture. This is what the Lord is speaking to me. And here's the deal. I love you guys, but I just won't go to you. Because what are you going to tell me? What I want to hear? What you think I should do? I don't need that. I need the truth. I need the truth of the word of God. But you, if you're never in your word, what are you going to tell me? You're going to give me a motivational speech? That doesn't nothing. I'm not here to entertain any of you guys. I'm here to teach you and equipped you for not if when the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. When he says walk out of your marriage. Or when he said your kids are never going to come back again. You're, you're going off of your emotions. But we're supposed to walk and live by faith and not by sight. Walk and live by faith. But we want to see it before it happens. Well, where's your faith at? Where's your faith? Are you sowing that seed in faith? Are you, uh, are you believing that your son's going to walk back into this building? Or your, or your marriage, that they're going to walk back into this place? Do you, are you believing that by faith? I'm going to call you and I'm going to agree with you in faith. Like, man, I can lock arms with you now, sister. And I literally say this, like, man, I don't know everything, but I'm telling you, I do believe, like, the Lord's supernatural. He downloaded some things, two things into me. Many things, but I'm a, I'm a studier of his word. I'm a studier of his word. And I say this like, man, if you have a humble heart and you're willing to learn and you would sit down and you allow me to teach you, man, I'll teach you. I'll teach you. I'll teach you the things that I, everything I've learned, all I want to do is give it away. But people just, they want that excitement and all this. Those are fleshy things. Those are soulless realms. I'm highly flammable, for you guys that don't know. I'm highly flammable. When it's go time, it's go time. If I need to preach to God, I'm ready in and out of season. But I feel like the Lord wants me to do is like teach my people. And above that, he's sending the Holy Spirit, what is the greatest teacher ever. John 14, 26 says, but the helper, this is Jesus saying, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Every single one of us as believers and followers of Christ. This is just not to pastors. This is what we call the Great Commission. The Great Commission says this. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority. How much authority? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, because of that, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and in the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. And teaching them. Whoa. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's our great commission. So my question to you is, who are you discipling? Who are you teaching? Who are you leading to Christ? So when I lead people to Christ, immediately, you know what I do? Hey, give me your number, bro. You're going to need my number. Just like how I was, like, man, I'm, I definitely know this through experience, right? Give me your number. I'm going to walk you through some things. Even when I, I love when we're seeing new people coming in here. I just don't want, like... We need to equip you. But it's just not pastors. Where in that passage does it say, hey, just pastors, go in there and make disciples? You have the same authority that I have. 
There's no junior Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. But that's only if you had revelation of that. Come on, somebody. Oh, so may we be like David, what he says in Psalms 86, 11. This is what he says. Teach me. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Lord, teach me. Lord, teach me. I'm not just reading words. No, Lord, teach me. Teach me how to be a father, Lord. Teach me how to be a husband to my wife. Teach me how to be a father to my children. Lord, teach me. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to deliver your word. Teach me how to prophesy. Teach me, Lord. But do we have a teachable heart? Do we have a teachable heart? That's what it's about. For always learning. May we never get too familiar with these passages of scripture. Oh, I know that passage. That's familiar passage. Oh, man, there's so much that we could constantly learn and grow. And I love, man, I love being around a word person. I love it and I know it. I love being around Andy Caldwell. He's a, God, he's a word person. He, he's in his word. And I know it and I love it. Right? Like, that's who I want to be. I'm telling you, like, but that, maybe they say that about you. You could do it. Are you putting in the work? Are you just coming in here every Sunday, throwing a couple of dollars in, in a tithing offering box, raising, raising a hallelujah when there's no storm? Come on, somebody. Or are you diving into your word? Not by Carmelo's words, but by his word. That's what sets you free. Once you have that revelation, come on, somebody. Psalms 139 and 7 and 8 says this. Well, people say, oh, I hear it a lot. Oh, I don't feel them right now. I don't, it's not, I love you guys. It's, but I've had revelation of that. I had revelation in Psalms 139, 7 and 8 that says this. Where can I flee from your presence? Where can I flee from your spirit? If I ascend into the heaven or I ascend into the depths of hell, where can I flee? So you don't feel him. He's, he's in you. Well, so, but if this hasn't, if you haven't got revelation of that, then we're going to live off of our feelings. I don't see him moving right now. Don't we sing a song that even when we don't see him working, that he's still working? He's our way maker. He's our miracle worker. He's our promise keeper. Even when we don't see, we, we sing those songs. But I don't feel him right now. He's not a feeling. He's a person. And his name is Jesus. Oh, I love you guys. I happen to have revelation of that. Oh, where can I? Go? I've had it. Uh, and you're, I'm not turning back. I've had that revelation. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you have that revelation. Because once you do that, not if, when your moms and your dads or your families or your coworkers or so-called besties or whatever turn on you. He says in his word that he will never, not that he might, he will never leave you nor he, he will forsake you. And what does love do? Love holds no record of wrong. <sighs> Come on, somebody. You guys are getting, I didn't get to do this for a verse, uh, first service. This is all fresh for you guys. Come on, somebody. So that's where we are. The Messiah sitting down. Picture, like, I, when I read my Bible, come on, somebody, read the Bible. Jesus walks into the temple. All the people, not so a couple people, no, no, no. All of them came to him and sat down to hear the word of God. Then this is what happens. Then the, this, then the scribes, in verse 3 says this, then the scribes and the Pharisees, which are the religious people, come on somebody, brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. You know who the scribes are? The scribes are the Pharisees and the religious people. They are the ones who just disrus disrupted the whole church service. Drag this woman in, caught in the very act of adultery. In the very act, this is the word of God says, 
caught in the very act. And they had the audacity to call him teacher. To call him teacher. He wasn't their teacher. He said, you keep on going, you're reading down where we're going to get. They were, saying, they were using this as a trap to accuse him. Just like your brothers and your sisters and your so-called friends say, they want to try, oh, you're really a Christian? Oh, you're, oh, you're really a follower of Christ? To accuse him. Verse 5 says, now Moses in the law, they're quoting the law to him. Now Moses in the law commanded us, such should be stoned. But what do you say? They said, testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. They wanted a stoner to death. They dragged this woman, caught in the very act of adultery. The religious people brought her in and said, hey, wait, wait, wait. In the law, Moses says, got a stoner to death. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Because religion kills. Religion kills. Religion and religious people stop the move of God. Can't stop, like, it's not stopping God. It's trying to. It's not like, that's what I'm saying. Religious, religion could coming in here every Sunday doing the same thing, just going through the motions, going through the motions, and going through the motions. But there's no godly character. There's no fruit. But I want to teach you guys. The Lord wants to teach us godly character. Lord, I don't know things. And I, the people are genuine. They tell me when they're new believers, Pastor Carmelo, I don't know how to read you. And they're being genuine. They're being genuine. But that's us. Who's, we've had this encounter with Jesus. We've got to disciple them. We've got to teach them the word of God. But if you're not in your word, then the word's not in you. So how could you give away something you do not have? They were doing this to test him and to accuse him. You know who's the accuser of our brethren? You know who even the devil tried to test our Lord and our Savior? After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, being led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit? In Matthew 4, 5, and 7 says this. The devil took him, talking about Jesus, took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said this. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord God to the test. Revelations 12, 9 and 11 says this, the great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled down to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser, there's that word, for the accuser of the brothers and the sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Come on, someone. they tried to accuse him. They tried to accuse him. Do you realize that the enemy all day long is accusing you all day long? Oh, you're not really a Christian. You're not really, the, who's accusing you? Could it be your family members? Could it be your friends? Who's accusing you right now? You, you gotta recognize that's not from the Holy Spirit. That's not from the Holy Spirit. Man, that's why I say when people walk through these doors, as me being a youth pastor, as me, all these people walking through these doors, and when I say, man, it's so good to see you, brother. It's so good to see you, sister. Because you know on how much the world is condemning them? You know on how much people and their own family members are condemning them? But us that say that we have that encounter with Jesus, we want to judge them and be critical on them instead of literally loving the hell out of them? And demonstrating the kingdom of repentance. 
It's a kindness and goodness that leads people to repentance. Man, they don't want religion. People don't, man, so many people, why do you think this church is like this? We're growing. So many people are coming. And what do we pray for? Lord, here's my prayer. Here's our prayer here at the bridge. Lord, bring the hurting, bring the broken, bring the lot. Lord, by the spirit of living God, bring whoever you need to bring here today, Lord. Lord, let them teach you. Lord, let them have one encounter with you today, Jesus. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, that the way that they walked in here, they're not going to walk out the same, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that the anointing destroys the yoke and removes every burden. Because all what the enemy meant for evil, Lord, you will turn it around for my good and our good. That's what it's about. Love the hell out of them. So when we come here, like, man, that's why we do what we do. I, this isn't something I do. It's who I am. It's who I am. Why? Because I've been forgiven much. And because I've been forgiven much, all I want to do is love much. And it's only because of Jesus. I shouldn't be here. I should be dead. I deserve, I deserve hell but Jesus. But that's just not my story. That's every single one of our stories but Jesus went to the cross for you. Don't get your affirmation from, your, from anyone else other than the Father. Let him write his word upon your heart. Teach me, Lord, to hear, teach me, Lord, to hear your voice. Teach me, Lord. The Holy Spirit's your teacher. Any of us lack uh, wisdom, ask, and he, he'll give it to us gracefully. So there's that scenario. And I always say this. Here's my new saying that the Lord's having me saying. Even when I'm not preaching, I'm still preaching. Even when I'm not preaching, I'm still preaching. I don't go around and tell people I'm a pastor. I don't go around and tell people this and that. Because even when I'm not preaching, I'm still preaching. It's the word of God. It, it's my life. People see me and they know me from high school or they known me from a long time ago. And they see me now. It happened about a month ago. Like, oh my gosh, Carmelo, like, what happened to you? And be like, man, it's not what happened to me. It's not what's wrong with me. It's what's been made right. I've had an encounter with Jesus. Man, I was a hurting, broken gang member alcoholic. But Jesus, but Jesus, I received his grace and I received his forgiveness. And that's why I want to forgive people. I want to set people free. It's a simple truth that sets people free. Amen? So Jesus, here's what Jesus did. After he, they dragged this woman in, caught in an act of adultery, what did Jesus do? Jesus stooped down. Jesus stooped down as he didn't hear them. What did he do when he stooped down? Jesus stooped down and he wrote on the ground. What did he write in the ground? I don't know what he wrote. Doesn't say. You could think all you want. Go for it. Doesn't say. I'm thinking about what, I'm thinking more of what he did. Right? He stooped down. He went on the ground. Can you imagine the dramatic scene of a woman coming in here caught in the very act of adultery? In the very act of adultery. Can you imagine the shame she came in with? If you're caught in the very act, covering yourself up, covering herself up, and everyone looking at her. It's just like right now, he was teaching the word of God. Just like right now in this church service. And can we picture Jesus right now? Everyone bringing this adulterous woman caught in. And, he's, and their religious are people saying, hey, in the law, I don't care about your word, teacher. In the law, it says, let's kill her. Let's stone her. She did this, but what do you say? But what do you say? He took authority of that whole situation. He got down on his knees and he showed his character. He showed his character and his divinity. Here's what he says in James 1, 19 and 20. Here's what Jesus demonstrated that we could all learn from. Here's a teaching moment. Even when he wasn't preaching, he was still preaching. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone, who? Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. 
Because human anger does not produce the righteousness of God that he desires. Do you realize describing our Messiah, he describes himself as being meek and lowly? Meek and lowly. In Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says this. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest into your souls. Meek. He's meek and lowly. He demonstrated. He took control of that whole situation. You know what meek means? Not weakness. Meekness. He's meek. It's strength under control. He knew who he was. They kept like, what do you say, Jesus? What do you say, Jesus? What are you going to say? We well, want to bring people and you want to throw all their sin in front of everybody. They want to stone her to death. But what do you say, Jesus? He ignored them like, as though he didn't hear them. As though he didn't hear them. Sometimes you got to realize who's talking to you. Are those that religious spirit that's talking to you? I recognize religious spirits all day long, and they don't like me. And I, I, I'm, right? I'm telling you, it's a religious spirit. We don't get along. Do you know it's a religious people that's, that told Jesus to go to the cross? You guys know that, right? The guys with the Torah and the white, all that. It was them. It was the religious people. So these same religious people said, hey, we caught this woman in adultery in the very act. But what do you say? Jesus knelt down. What did we do? He was showing his authority. He did. Do you realize he wasn't out of his emotions? Wait, wait, what did she do? What did she do? Like we, we do. Can we imagine all the eyes that were on this woman? Can you picture you were that woman or we were that woman? Caught in adultery. Now you're going to go. Now they want to kill you right now. Everyone's looking at her, covering herself up with all of her shame. With all of her guilt, with all of her condemnation. But Jesus slowed it all down. Jesus slowed it all down. He took authority of that whole situation. You know why? Because true leaders don't panic under pressure. Man, if you see somebody, and I, I see people who are leaders seeking positions or wherever, imagine you have a boss or whatever the case. And you're the boss or you're the owner of the company or you're supposed to be the man or you're supposed to be the pastor or whatever the case. Put yourself, whatever it is, right? You know who I'm looking at? I'm under you. I'm looking at that pastor. I'm looking at that boss. I'm looking at that leader. I'm looking at who you say is leader, right? And if I see that leader all scared and panicking and, oh, my gosh, what do I do? And I don't know what to do. The devil's doing this and all that stuff. I'm looking. I'm like, man, because he's panicking, now I'm going to be in a panic. <laughs> right? But you see a secure leader who's quick to listen, slow to speak, addressing situations. I see what's going on. I'm surveying the room. Lord, what are you doing right now? What do you want me to go speak right now? Let's go take authority over that whole, play, that whole situation right now. He was demonstrating that. He slowed the whole thing down. And you notice what else Jesus didn't do? Jesus didn't look at her. Jesus did it. I'm sure all eyes were looking at her. Jesus got down. Did not make eye contact. In all of her guilt, in all of her condemnation, in all of her shame. Because it says in Genesis 2, 25, do you realize that was not the original design? Do you realize that? When God created mankind, Adam and Eve, they were both naked. It says in Genesis 2, 25, it says, Adam and Eve and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. They felt no shame. But as soon as the sin came in the world, the serpent deceived people. This is what it says a couple of verses later in Genesis 3, 7 says this. At that moment, their eyes were open, and they f suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. What are you trying to cover yourselves up with right now? What's, what fig leaves are you covering yourselves up with? What are you trying to dress up to cover your insecurities, your shortcuts, your addictions, whatever it is? That's the fall of the world. And that's where I'm saying Jesus got down there. And I think it's more of what he didn't do. He's like, oh, can you imagine the father's heart? And I think that's the same heart as us. Like, 
Why are you walking in that, son and daughter? That's not the way I created you. Why are you trying to cover yourself up with your job and your money and your position and your titles? Why are you trying to seek all these positions? Don't seek no position. Seek my presence. Seek first me and my kingdom. Then all things will be added unto you. Come on, somebody. So that's what happened. And what happens next? It says that Jesus stood up. Jesus stood up. Same thing that he does for every single one of you guys on the message that the Lord is having me deliver today. He stands for you. He stands for you. When people are accusing you, trying to test you, he stands for you. He stands for you. Let's all stand. He wrecks them all. He takes authority of that whole situation. He stands up. He's that great intercessor. He's the one that went to the cross for you. He did it. And as he got up, this is what Jesus said. You without sin, let him throw out a stone at her first. Again, he stooped down and rode on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted. Those who heard, he said this. You without sin in here, you cast the first stone. Them hearing this, they were convicted. They were cut to their heart by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Verse 11, she said, no one, Lord. No one, Lord. Not friend, not savior. No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. Now go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. For everyone in here, we all know what John 3, 16 says. For God so loved, he so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. There's no way to the father except through the son. And he's saying for every single one of us, for all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God, it says in Romans 3, 23. All of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short. We all deserve death. But Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus, if you have revelation of Jesus taking your spot on that cross, if you apply that blood of Jesus to your life, you'll never be the same. Wait, Lord for all the sins, all the people that I hurt, Lord. I hurt a lot of people, Lord. You forgive me? Yes, son, I forgive you. Wait, you love me? Lord, I don't, I, I've been a horrible person. You love me? Yes, I love you, son. I love you. You're not gonna condemn me right now? You're not gonna judge me like all these other people? Judge me that he was nothing but a gang member, an alcoholic, and joy, he's up to nothing? He's a loser in life? You're not gonna speak that over me, Lord? You're not gonna condemn me for all of my sin? I don't condemn you, son. Now go and sin no more. Now go and sin no more. It's the kindness and goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. If you have that revelation on how kind the Lord is, don't be sin conscious. Don't be thinking about sin. Think about his faithfulness and his goodness. I don't have to sin. I don't have to do those things. I don't have to go drink alcohol. I don't have to do drugs. I don't have to gossip about people. I don't have to be bitter. I don't have to walk in unforgiveness. I don't have to do that. Because you didn't condemn me, Lord. 
freely I received this forgiveness. I want to give it away. So if you're in here right now and you feel like, man, Pastor Carmelo, this message right here, man, I've been, there's been a lot of condemnation. I got scripture for you in Romans 8, 1 for right now, for right now, if you are in Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. You're a new creation, but you gotta acknowledge him. You gotta allow him to be the Lord of your life. Not just your friend and your savior, but is he the Lord of your life? Do you wanna surrender it all? You deserve death. In the law, they were 100% right to stone that woman. But where was the husband? That's a whole nother story. I'm not getting there. 100% justified to stone that woman. She deserved death. Just like every single one of us in here right now deserved death. But Jesus, but Jesus, he lived, he died for us. And all he's asking us is to live for him. So if you're in here right now and you're saying, Pastor Carmelo, I've been condemning myself or I've been condemning others. I've been judgmental at times. I've hurt at times. But right now, I want to surrender it all. I know you already took away every sin, but I want to lay it down at the foot of the cross right now. I want to lay it down. I want to lay down my pride. I want to lay down my ego. I want to lay down my family. I want to lay down everything. I want you to be the Lord of my life. And I want you to teach me how to become a son and a daughter of a king. Be my father, Abba Father. And you want a fresh revelation to that new life. Take one drink of Jesus and you'll never thirst. If that's you in here right now, you're saying, I want that living water. I want that forgiveness and I want that grace. And I'm laying everything here at the foot of the cross. So I'm walking in this place. I'm not walking out the same. If that's you in here right now, I want you to put your hand up. Put your hand up. Praise God. Praise God. Give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Prayer team, can I get you guys to come up? <clears throat> come on. You guys with your guys' hands up. I want you guys to come on up here. We're going to pray as a family. You're not alone. You're not alone. Come on, somebody. Good to see you, my brother. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on, sit. Let's give them a round of applause. Come on. If you guys could face me and we're going to pray a prayer together. And our brothers and sisters, can we extend our hands and, and pray with them? Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Jesus, for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me, for all of my sins, of what I deserve. But right now, Jesus, I ask you, to forgive me. I repent. I thank you that you don't condemn me, but that you love me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me to be your hands and feet to my family, to my friends, and to the world. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, what you did here today, Lord. I thank you, Abba, Father, Lord. I just thank you, Father. May you put your super on their natural, Father. For them boldly coming to the throne of grace, Father. You said that you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble, Father. So I just thank you, Father. I have every single one of my brothers and my sisters that they humble themselves, Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, as they continue to delight themselves in the Lord, may you give them the desires of their heart, Lord. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, may you give them a hunger and a thirst for your word and for your righteousness. And every time that they look at themselves in the mirror, may they see themselves the way that, they, that you see them. That they're loved, that they're chosen, that they're called, that they're anointed. But above all things, remind them, my Father, that they're sons and daughters of a king. So we seal all of this, what you did here today. Because all of your promises are yes and amen. So we just love and praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said? 
Amen. God bless you guys. Love you guys. You guys need prayer? Come on up.